everybody. Welcome to Excel Video 343. I'm Nate Moore and I'm sending this to you from Dallas, Texas, where I'm in town for three days to work with the client here doing all kinds of things, custom analysis, custom examples on their PM data. If your practice could benefit from the same kind of a couple day attention on site, I'd love to help you. So we played with one variable. We played with two variables in a data table and we got all that to work. What if you want to play with three variables? Well, the problem is we got a two-dimensional table here. I mean, we can go this way, we can go that way, but there's really not a third dimension to our table in Excel. So let me give you a couple of ideas. If I wanted this loan amount, instead of be 275, let's say I want to buy some other equipment with this, finance it all together, I want to make it 300,000. All of these numbers will update for me, and I've got that, and so I can do a third variable. Oh, now I want to finance some more equipment and make it 325. I can do it that way and just change the variables as I go. That's one way to do it. If you want to make it a little fancier and make it all so, hey, I can change it and see what the, the data is as I go, another way to do it besides just changing this number is to come up here and say, I'm going to do a data table example. And what I've done here is I'm going to leave this for a second and come down. I've copied the data table over here. Here's the same data table, the 275. Then what I did is I just copied it again, and here's the data table with 300. Same formula here, referencing this time these cells instead of the ones above. And then I came down here and did it again for the 325. I haven't finished the 325,000 example. I thought I would finish that as part of the video and show you what I did. So I copied everything down. Then what I said is, okay, I'm going to go select this entire range. I'm going to go to the data tab, what if analysis, data table, and I'm just going to say, hey, this time use this cell for the rows, use my term for the columns, and now I have a data table with 325, one with 300, and here's one with 275. So what I did up here is I said, all right, I'm going to summarize this, and these are just numbers in Excel. Now there's a formula there, and we're going to talk about what you can and can't do in a data table in the next Excel video, but what I can do is I can come here and say, all right, I want 575,000, so I'm just going to do equals five years 275 so here's the 275 table I'm going to come right here there's five years and take that cell there then what I want is for the 300 so I'm just going to come down here there's 300,000 there's five years and pick the five percent then I'm going to come to 325 325 five years and take that then I'm going to do the same thing for 10 years from the 275 table, go to 10 years and get this. From the 300 table, 10 years and get that. Last one. The $325,000 table, 10 years. Now that I have this, what I can do is just copy these across. Copy these across. A data table now that's a lot like a pivot table. It says, wait, okay, here we go. There's my interest rates, here's my term, here's the year range to make this work, and we're good to go. That's what I wanted to show you. Essentially, you have a pivot table now. You've got to write the formulas once. Once they're written, you're good to go, and you can essentially add seven years or nine years or some more dollar amounts, whatever you want to do to make that data table work. Stay tuned next time. I want to talk about what you can and can't do with formulas in a data table. We'll do that next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.